Chapter 1 I was in the terminal stage of a fatal illness and left the last 200,000 yuan meant for my treatment to my wife, but she thought I was faking it, and when I died, she was on a date with her unforgettable first love. No matter how much our daughter tried to convince her, she refused to come back and see me one last time. After my death, my bank accounts were all frozen. Yet she thought my daughter and I were playing a cruel joke on her, teaming up to bully her. By the time she realized the news of my death was true, it was too late. Two months ago, I was diagnosed with a terminal illness. The treatment plan offered by the doctor was rejected by me. It wasn't that my family couldn't afford the money, but if I could only live three more months, the wasted money would be enough for my wife to live on for a long time. I was the pillar of the family. If I spent all the money, what would happen to my wife and daughter? I won't live long. There's no need to waste money on this illness. This 200,000 yuan might be the last bit of money I can earn for the family. Keep it for Lin's tuition and living expenses, I said. I thought my wife would be anxious and worried when she heard this, but she wasn't. Instead, she looked annoyed. You think I can't earn money? You don't want to give me money in the future? Just say so, my wife coldly rebuked. Hearing this, I felt a deep sense of guilt. I wouldn't be able to earn money for the family in the future, but I was really worried about her and our daughter. She had no social experience for over 10 years. How would she support herself and our daughter in the future? I don't despise you. I'm just worried about you. After I'm gone, you need to be frugal. Don't spend money lavishly anymore. I responded softly, bowing my head. But before I could finish, she interrupted me. You say you don't despise me. You do despise me for spending money lavishly. If you want a divorce, just say it. Without you, there are plenty of people who would marry me. My wife said angrily. No, no, don't be angry. Honey, I didn't mean it that way. She had always been harsh with me, but I could understand. She was beautiful, and many wealthy young men pursued her back then. She chose me and gave me a lovely and sensible daughter. I was very grateful to her. She was always a big kid with a bit of a temper, and I would try my best to tolerate her, because I believe that women are meant to be cherished. I couldn't let her down. Marrying you was the unluckiest thing in my life. She stuffed the bank card into her bag and ordered me arrogantly. I invited my college classmates over for dinner tonight. You make us a table full of dishes, and don't embarrass me, got it? But I, I was really weak. Even turning my body was extremely painful. Making a whole meal could kill me with pain. If you don't want to, fine. When my classmates know I married a useless husband, it's me who will be embarrassed, not you. My wife said coldly, I'll do it. Okay, don't be mad. Honey, how could I embarrass you? I forced a strained smile, but my wife didn't appreciate it. She snorted coldly and turned away. Chapter 2. I swallowed five painkillers and felt slightly better. Enough to get out of bed, but there were hardly any groceries in the fridge, so I had to endure the pain and go to the market downstairs to buy a lot of groceries. Carrying the groceries back home, I felt like my body was being torn apart. The effect of the painkillers was no longer effective against my current condition, but I had promised my wife to make a table of good dishes, and I couldn't let her down or embarrass her in front of her classmates. After resting for a while, I forced myself through the pain to cook a table full of dishes. When I returned to my room, I was in unbearable pain, feeling like I was going to die. I didn't know how much time had passed, but in a daze, I heard the door open. Paul, what's the meaning of this? I opened my eyes with difficulty, seeing several figures moving in front of me in a blur. Honey, you're back. I've cooked the food. You all can eat without worrying about me. I said through gritted teeth, struggling to speak. My classmates are here, and you're hiding in the room. Didn't you say you didn't want to embarrass me? Is it so hard for you to make an appearance? If you didn't want to, you shouldn't have made this dinner. My wife rebuked, pointing at me aggressively. Suddenly, I felt a deep sadness. I didn't blame her for scolding me. If my body were better, I could have helped her entertain her classmates. I only blamed myself for falling seriously ill, making my body so weak. I'll get up now. Honey, help me up. I reached out, but she stepped back two steps. What are you pretending for? If you want to come out, come out. If not, forget it. After saying this, she turned and left, slamming the door behind her. I walked from the bedroom to the living room, where there were a dozen people, all very noisy. My head felt like it was going to explode, and the figures in front of me were blurry. I leaned against the sofa, gasping for breath before forcing myself to stand up and greet everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my home, I said with difficulty, not even able to lift my head, but I didn't hear any responses, only some sarcastic remarks. Caro. Did you call your husband or your father-in-law? Caro, you didn't marry me back then because you liked old men. Ha <laughs> ha, look at him. He really looks like he's about to die. Caro, you're something else. No wonder you didn't marry me. You like old men. Ha. Ha ha ha. I'm sorry. I've been sick lately. My body is not very well. I used up almost all my strength to say this. They were so noisy. They probably didn't even hear me. 
My wife walked up to me and gave me a hard shove. If you didn't want to come out and greet, you didn't have to. Why are you still standing there? Go clean up the dining room. Do I have to do everything myself? Disgraceful. I slowly turned and, leaning against the wall, went to the dining room. After cleaning up the kitchen, the living room had quieted down. I saw two figures intertwined. It was my wife and her unforgettable first love. Chapter 3. Caro. Don't do this. You haven't gotten married all these years, just waiting for me. But this is your house. It's not right. Get up. What are you afraid of? That useless guy can't do anything to us, can he? I really can't. Although I've always loved you, I can't. My heart shattered instantly. She was making out with someone else in our home, right in front of me. The pain magnified a thousand times over. Was it because I've been so uninteresting lately that she's been so unhappy? Paul, get back inside. I was standing outside the kitchen, lost in thought, when I heard my wife's reprimand. She was sitting on her unforgettable first love's lap, pointing at me and telling me to get back inside. I forced a bitter smile, feeling terrible, and supported myself against the wall to return to the bedroom. Standing in front of the mirror, I hardly recognized myself. I'm not even 40, yet I looked as haggard as a 70-year-old man. My face was skin and bones, and my hair was almost completely gone. How could someone as ugly as me be worthy of her? When I lay back down on the bed, I felt all my energy drain away instantly. The exhaustion from the afternoon made me feel like I wouldn't make it through the night. Lying in bed, the pain slowly began to fade, and memories came flooding back. She wasn't always like this. When we first got married, she was gentle, kind, and understanding. She still had her youthful beauty, while I was barely clinging to life. Hey! Just then, I heard a commotion outside. Mom! It was my daughter's voice. Who is this man? How could you bring a stranger into our home? Stranger? Don't talk like that. He might be your future dad. You crazy woman. How could dad have been so blind to marry you? Don't you know dad is sick? Sick? Pretending to be sick? I don't have time for this. Hurried footsteps approached, the bedroom door opened, and my daughter carefully closed the door behind her and sat down by the bed. Dad. What? What's happened to you? My daughter hadn't seen me in half a month, and seeing me so thin made her nose tingle, and she started to cry. Don't cry. Sweetheart, everyone dies eventually. Being able to see you one last time before I go brings me peace. I felt light as a feather, and seeing my daughter's tearful face filled me with sorrow, but also peace. She was the only person who could bring me peace in this world. I had intended to keep it from her, but today I sent her a text, telling her the truth. Dad, didn't your diagnosis say you had another month? Why are you saying tonight? My daughter's eyes reddened as she spoke. Silly girl, don't cry. I smiled and lifted my hand to wipe away her tears. Even though I didn't want to leave, I had to say goodbye, daddy's will is ready, and all the property will be inherited by you. I can't earn money for you anymore, so you'll need to spend it wisely. Your mother has a bad temper, but you've grown up and become sensible, so please be more tolerant of her and take good care of yourself, okay? I gave her a lot of advice, and she kept nodding and crying. My voice gradually weakened, and suddenly my daughter picked up her phone and dialed for an ambulance. I died on the way to the hospital. Chapter 4. My consciousness floated in the air watching my cold, lifeless body lying in the ambulance, feeling no pain at all, watching my daughter crying over me, I reached out to touch her head, silly girl, don't cry, daddy is still watching over you, my hand passed right through her head, I knew I was dead, and she could no longer hear me, following my will, my daughter arranged a simple funeral for me, she called my wife, my dad is dead, he was just cremated, and he will be buried soon, don't you want to see him one last time, my daughter said coldly into the phone, pretending to be dead for sympathy, always faking it, you're just like your father, how did I give birth to a daughter like you, my wife's angry voice came through the phone, Carolina, are you even human, your husband is dead, and you're still being sarcastic, my dad was diagnosed with a terminal illness two months ago, do you need me to show you the death certificate, my daughter said angrily, keep pretending, put more effort into it, and I might believe you, beep, 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 bastard, after my wife hung up, my daughter cursed, then she squatted in front of the tombstone, crying in grief. At that moment, I felt a pang of heartache. I had hoped she would come to see me off, but she thought I was faking it. Before I died, I considered that she wasn't good to our daughter. So I wrote the will, leaving everything to my daughter. My intuition told me that was the right thing to do. Sweetheart, don't cry. You need to be strong. I squatted beside my daughter, gently patting her shoulder to comfort her, but she couldn't hear me. Yet, she seemed to feel something and slowly stood up. There was a stubborn strength in her frail shoulders. Dad, rest in peace. I will take care of myself. Carolina doesn't care about you. She's blind. She will regret it. Seeing the determination in my daughter's eyes, I knew she had grown up that day, 
Without me to rely on and with her mother being unreliable, she would have to rely on herself from now on. Daughter, daddy doesn't want to leave you, but I will watch over you as you grow. My daughter used my will to complete the inheritance. My house, which was my premarital property, now solely belonged to my daughter. My savings, the serious illness allowance from my company, and the death compensation were all hers. She knew my wife's nature, spending money like water. So she immediately cancelled all my bank accounts. She returned to the empty home, not turning on the lights, sitting in the living room, crying alone for a long time. I stayed with her quietly in the dark. After a long time, she took out her phone and called my wife. Mom, I'm home. I want to talk to you seriously. Can you come back now? My daughter said calmly into the phone. Hee hee. I really want to have a serious talk with you too. My wife's extremely cold voice came through the phone. Half an hour later, the door opened, and my wife, dressed up, came back. She turned on the lights, found my daughter sitting in the living room, and immediately walked over to sit opposite her, not turning on the lights, trying to scare me like a ghost. Would you be happy if you scared me to death? Unexpectedly, my daughter didn't get angry. She slowly raised her eyes and said softly, Dad is gone. From now on, it's just the two of us in this house. He he, still playing this game with me. I just want to ask you, why was my card declined when I went shopping today? Why did the bank say the account was cancelled? My wife demanded sharply. Chapter 5. My dad is dead. The bank cancelled his account. Is there a problem? I am the sole heir of his estate. If you want money from me in the future, you must go to his grave and apologize. My daughter finally looked up and said coldly. I realized she had truly grown up. Her eyes had the steadiness of an adult. She had a shadow of me in her. I felt a bit sad. When I was around, I could mediate between them. But now, without me, I wasn't sure they could coexist peacefully. Paul. My wife was furious. She stood up and shouted at the top of her lungs. Then she searched the house, not finding me, before storming back to the living room. Where is your father? Tell him to come out and give me a reasonable explanation for cancelling the bank accounts. My wife demanded angrily. My daughter frowned, clearly annoyed but still patiently said. I told you, my dad is dead. Here's the death certificate. Look for yourself. My daughter took out the death certificate and slapped it on the coffee table. My wife glanced at it, immediately tearing it up and throwing it in my daughter's face. You two are going to such lengths to keep money from me, even faking a death certificate. If you don't want to give me money, just say so. Do you think there are no other men willing to spend money on me besides your father? It's ridiculous. And you, you're my flesh and blood. How can you help your dad bully me? You're so heartless. My daughter's shoulders shook with anger. She couldn't believe my wife was so unreasonable. I could see my daughter had given up on her mother completely. Tell your father, if he doesn't give me money, I'll divorce him. My wife said coldly. My dad's household registration has been cancelled. You can remarry anytime. From now on, I sever our mother-daughter relationship. Don't come to me for support in your old age, you little brat. My wife was furious. She stood up and slapped my daughter. I instinctively reached out to stop it, but my hand went right through my wife's hand. Smack. A red mark appeared on my daughter's face. That slap shattered my daughter's heart, and it shattered mine. How could she be so heartless? I was truly dead. Why couldn't she believe it? This is my house. Please leave. My daughter said coldly, this is your house, without me, you wouldn't even exist, you don't recognize me as your mother, and you want to kick me out of my house, ask Paul if he dares, or are you two conspiring to kick me out, fine, fine, I'll leave right now, don't regret it. My wife grabbed her bag and stormed out, slamming the door behind her, chapter 6, this time, my daughter didn't cry, she looked up at the ceiling, her gaze resolute, dad, did you see that? She's heartless and doesn't even care about your life or death. Please don't blame me for not giving her money. My daughter said softly. Sweetheart. How could I blame you? It's all my fault. Sigh. I sat next to her. Feeling dejected. But a trace of resentment toward Carolina grew in my heart. She used to just have a bad temper. But she was never this heartless. Why had she become like this? Was it because I didn't treat her well? I had endless tolerance for her. Even if she wanted the moon. I would try to get it for her. But why did she have to be so cruel to me? In the following days, my daughter didn't go to school. She took a short leave. She sensed that something was wrong with my wife lately. So she hired a private detective to follow her. It didn't take long for my daughter to find out that Carolina had been hanging out with a man named Helen every day. There were even daily records of them booking hotel rooms. Helen was my wife's unforgettable first love. She had mentioned him at home more than once. So my daughter knew who he was. But my daughter never would have thought that just after my death, my wife would be so eager to rekindle her relationship with her first love. Helen, my husband hasn't been giving me money lately. I don't have any money to book hotel rooms recently. What should I do? My wife snuggled in Helen's arms, looking tender. It turned out she saved all her tenderness for her first love. It's okay. I have money. I will take care of you. Helen said, 
Holding my wife, I don't want to be with him anymore. If I divorce him, will you marry me? My wife asked Helen. Helen's eyes showed a flash of panic, but he put his arm around my wife's shoulder and said softly, I haven't gotten married all these years because I've been waiting for you, but I'm already in my thirties. I'm no longer young. My wife said sadly, even if you're fifty or sixty, you'll always be young and the most beautiful in my heart. Helen said, boo-hoo, you're so good to me. Recently, they've been teaming up to bully me. I feel like I can't stay in that home anymore. My wife said, crying in grievance. Don't cry, my love. As long as I'm here, they can't bully you. How could they be so heartless to bully someone as gentle and kind as you? Helen said, full of pity. You're the best to me. Boo-hoo. Helen, I will always love you. I will always love you too. Not long after, Helen received a phone call. He went back to the room and started putting on his clothes. There's an issue with my business, and the company needs me to handle it. I can't stay with you tonight, Helen said, kissing my wife's forehead. But I only want you to stay with me tonight, my wife said sadly. I need to make money. How can I take care of you without money, right? Okay then. My soul followed Helen as he took a taxi back to an old, run-down apartment in the city. When he got home, a woman came out anxiously. Why have you been staying out all night every day lately? Is work really that busy? The kid is sick, you know. Sorry, the boss has been keeping an eye on me, making me work overtime. I might get promoted to manager. What's more important, work or the kid? Of course the kid is more important. Let's take the kid to the hospital. Helen told my wife he hadn't married in his life, waiting for her. Turns out he was lying. He was married and had a wife and kids. These two scoundrels, neither of them is any good. Chapter 7 my soul returned to my daughter's side. It was late at night, and she was carefully going through my belongings. Dad, mom is having an affair. If you knew about this, it would break your heart, wouldn't it? You were so kind and good to her. How could she be so heartless? Her father had just passed away, and her mother didn't care at all. The thought of her having to face such a change at such a young age made my heart ache. She was so strong. Surely she would get through this, right? I really didn't want her and her mother to completely fall out. But thinking about my wife's behavior, I couldn't help but feel a wave of resentment. My daughter opened her phone and saw a message from the private detective. It was information about Helen. It turned out he not only pretended to be single in front of my wife but also pretended to be wealthy. She was silent for a long time before she finally called my wife. You'd rather be someone's mistress than come back and see dad one last time. My daughter said coldly. Stop it. Let him die if he wants to. And who are you calling a mistress? Helen is single and owns his own company. He promised to marry me if you apologize to me. I'll let you live as a rich girl. My wife's voice came through the phone. My daughter laughed angrily. Dad gave you 20 or 30,000 a month. Wasn't that enough? My daughter said coldly. 20 or 30,000. That's nothing. One handbag. And it's gone. Helen says he'll give me 100,000 a month. You're too young to understand how many places need money. So, will you apologize? My wife said arrogantly. She was completely lost in her dream. Trapped by Helen's lies. My daughter was clearly disappointed in her. And so was I. Not shed a tear until seeing the coffin. Don't come begging me on your knees in the future. This time, it was my daughter who hung up the phone forcefully, as if making a firm decision. Dad, I don't want this mom anymore. Will you forgive me? She doesn't deserve to be my mom. My daughter said softly. Do what you need to do, sweetie. How could I blame you? She doesn't deserve you. I comforted her gently. Maybe she felt my support somehow because her eyes suddenly became resolute. A few days later, my wife ran out of money. She never had any money of her own and always used my bank cards. Now that all my accounts were cancelled, how could she have any money left? That night, my wife called Helen out. My daughter had been keeping track of her mother's whereabouts, and when the private detective informed her that my wife and Helen had entered a hotel, she took out her phone. She found Helen's wife's number and sent a text message. Your husband is pretending to be rich and cheating on you. Aren't you going to do something? It didn't take long for my daughter to get a reply. Who are you? Are you some kind of scammer? I sent you the hotel room number. It's up to you if you want to catch them. Chapter 8. My daughter received several messages, but she didn't respond. She just sent the hotel booking records. They were the most convincing evidence and needed no further explanation. Recently, Helen had been leaving early and coming home late, sometimes not coming home at all. Helen's wife had already found this suspicious, but she never expected that her usually gentle husband would be cheating on her. Anger flared in her heart, and she immediately called her brother and a group of people to go to the hotel. My wife was cozying up to Helen. When are you planning to marry me? She asked coquettishly, like a teenager. I'll marry you as soon as you get a divorce. Helen replied softly, sounding sincere. I'll divorce Paul immediately. My wife said resolutely. Great. Helen's face was full of guilt, but my wife didn't notice. Recently, that bastard Paul froze all my bank accounts. I don't want to go back home. Can you give me some money? 
My wife asked sweetly. Helen was just playing with my wife. He had fashioned himself as a wealthy, pure-hearted older man, deceiving countless respectable women. When he heard my wife asking for money, he was ready to make his escape. He had his fun and hadn't spent much money, so he had nothing to lose. Bad timing. I just invested all my liquid funds in a new project yesterday. I'll give you some money as soon as the funds return. Don't you have credit cards? Use those for now, Helen said. They've all been frozen. I really have no money left. Let me figure something out. Don't worry. I'll get you some money tomorrow. How about a hundred thousand? That'll last me a few days. You're so good to me. I love you the most. Bang. Before they could react, the door was kicked open. Seven or eight people burst into the room, surrounding the couple on the bed. My wife hurriedly pulled up the blanket, her face full of terror. What are you doing? This is my room. Get out. Helen saw his wife leading the group, and his face turned beet red. I knew something was up when you started staying out all night. You're out here cheating while our kid is sick. The child is still sick. Helen, you beast. Do you think you're being fair to me, to the child? Helen's wife's face turned incredibly fierce. W what? Helen, she's your wife, my wife said in disbelief. You knew my brother-in-law was married and you still seduced him. You bitch, I'll beat you to death today. A middle-aged man leaped onto the bed and started kicking them before they could explain. What are you all standing around for? Beat these cheaters to death. How dare you steal someone else's husband? You whore. You look just like a vixen. I'll tear your face apart. Helen. You bastard. I told you if you ever did anything to hurt my sister, I'd kill you. The rest of the group joined in, punching and kicking, quickly beating the couple until they were bleeding and unable to move. Chapter 9. Take pictures of these cheaters and post them online to expose them, the burly man said, pulling out his phone and taking pictures. The others quickly followed suit. After the beating, Helen's wife was still not satisfied and slapped both Helen and my wife several times. Helen, prepare for a lawsuit. After the group left, my wife curled up in a corner, staring blankly, lost in thought. Her dream of marrying into a wealthy family was utterly shattered. Carolina, I'm sorry. Helen's voice echoed in the room. My wife, suddenly filled with rage, got up and grabbed an ashtray, charging at Helen. You bastard. How dare you lie to me? I'll kill you. She smashed the ashtray on Helen's head, stunning him. After a few more hits, Helen finally had enough. He was a man, after all. And when he fought back, there was no way a woman could match him. He pushed my wife down, pinning her to the ground, and began slapping her face. You bitch, how dare you hit me, if it weren't for you seducing me, would I be in this mess? Now my wife and her whole family know I'm cheating. All my hard work is wasted. It's all your fault, you whore. And you think you can marry into a rich family, keep dreaming. Damn it, I'll kill you. Helen showed his true colors, his face twisted in rage. My wife had already been badly beaten, and Helen, burning with anger took the ashtray from her and started smashing it against her head. After five or six hits, my wife stopped moving, but Helen didn't stop. His life had been ruined, and he was taking all his anger out on her. I sat next to them, watching Helen beat my wife into unconsciousness, feeling no pity. She brought this on herself. The commotion in the room was loud, attracting a crowd outside. Soon, hotel security arrived, stopping Helen and calling the police and an ambulance. Helen was taken away by the police and my wife was taken away by the ambulance. Thanks to the quick medical intervention, my wife's life was saved, but her injuries were severe. With over 200 stitches on her head and a scar running across her face, her once beautiful face was destroyed. Helen had beaten her so badly that she was left disfigured and with a severe concussion. He was charged with intentional assault and faced prison time. His wife also filed for divorce, and Helen's life was completely ruined. A short video of the confrontation went viral on the forums recently. Someone posted the personal details of both the man and woman involved. My wife was still in the hospital when some troublemaking streamers found her room. Look, everyone, this is Carolina, the woman in that viral video, caught cheating and then beaten until disfigured by the husband. I checked, and she has over 200 stitches on her face. Look at her face, it's so ugly now. This is what you call karma. Chapter 10, my wife lay alone in the hospital, recovering from her injuries. A few days later, her condition improved slightly. She suddenly thought of our daughter and called her. Daughter. Mom was wrong. Mom wants to come home. Can you and dad forgive me? My wife said. Sobbing. She truly realized her mistake. And my daughter could feel her remorse. But my daughter no longer wanted to forgive her. She had given her many chances. And what had she received in return? Do you think a simple apology means I have to forgive you? My daughter said coldly. Mom is still in the hospital. With over 200 stitches on her face. Can you come to see me? If you really don't want to. Can you tell dad? He will take care of me. I've been trying to call him for days, but he doesn't answer. My wife pleaded. My daughter is not like me. She doesn't have a merciful heart. 
You deserve it. The fact that you're still alive is proof that God is blind. I'll tell you this, I will never forgive you in this life. Daughter, I'm your mother. How can you be so heartless? My wife said, starting to cry. Hey. My daughter didn't show an ounce of pity and replied coldly. Dad was so sick. Yet you made him go out to buy groceries and prepare a feast for your friends. It's your fault that dad died. You want me to forgive you? Fine. Bring dad back to life. With that, my daughter hung up the phone forcefully. My wife dropped the phone, lying in bed, ignoring the doctor's orders. She left the hospital and took a taxi home. She found the house empty and searched everywhere, realizing that all my belongings had been removed. She called several friends and family members, finally confirming my death. She saw my death certificate on the coffee table, picked it up and saw the date, the same day she had invited her friends for a dinner party at our house. Her tears finally fell, and she knelt in the living room, crying bitterly. In the afternoon, my wife found my grave and knelt before my tombstone. Paul, now I understand that only you truly loved me. Why was I so foolish, ignoring a good man like you to love others? I'm sorry, I was completely wrong, but now I have no chance to make it right. If you can hear me in heaven, will you forgive me? Paul, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. At that moment, my daughter's cold voice sounded behind her. Dad will never forgive you, even if you die, he won't forgive you. Daughter, please forgive mom. Mom was wrong. Give me another chance. Okay, do it for your dad. Okay. My wife clung to my daughter's legs, but my daughter pushed her away with disgust. From the time I was little, dad was the one who took care of me. When I was sick, he was the one by my bedside. What were you doing? Singing or shopping? Dad bought my clothes. Attended my parent-teacher meetings. You didn't even know what grade one was in. Do you have the right to call yourself a mom? Don't you feel any guilt? My daughter spoke without any emotion. Her words pierced my wife's heart like needles. Some mistakes can be forgiven, but others can't. From now on, we have no relationship. My daughter placed a flower on my grave and walked away. Chapter 11. My wife's heart shattered like glass. She knew she had done wrong, but my daughter wouldn't give her another chance. And I couldn't either. But what good was knowing she was wrong? She wandered the streets like a living corpse. The scar on her face, like a centipede, drew the attention of passers-by. What happened to that person? Look at that scar on her face. She has nice features, but with that scar, she looks terrifying. She's walking unsteadily. Stay away. She might try to skim you. Hey, it's her. She's been famous on the forums lately. Ha ha. The words of the onlookers pierced her ears, each one more hurtful than the last. She had destroyed her beautiful life with her own hands trampling on the heart of the one who loved her. What right did she have to live? She walked to a bridge, looked at the rushing water below, climbed over the railing, and jumped. A few days later, her body was found. My daughter didn't want to go, but she eventually collected her mother's body and arranged a simple funeral. The scandal between my wife and Helen had caused an uproar in the city, even affecting my daughter. Returning to school was difficult. She was always the subject of whispers and pointing fingers. The school saw that my daughter was depressed every day and feared she might take things too hard. So they offered her a solution. The school contacted another school in a different city to arrange for my daughter to transfer there. With the school's help, my daughter successfully transferred to another city for her studies and life. She, being strong, quickly overcame her psychological shadow, integrated into the new school life, and made new friends. Seeing her become more cheerful day by day, my soul gradually dissipated. 